A mother is someone who is supposed to be your cheerleader, to boost your confidence and make you feel like you can do anything. Yet for some, like the woman in today's episode, a mother can be the one who tears you down the most. What effect does that have on a young girl? Let's find out. Hello friends, welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Happy New Yes, and that includes sound effects. I'm Timothy Gregory bringing you the story of a woman whose mother set her up to feel unworthy, unloved, and undeserving. But we'll see just how she was set free from this mindset on today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you'll want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. The true story of Amy Trees. Okay, okay, okay. Are you going to get off that bus or not? <laughs> Amy, come on. Get down here and stop that crying. Oh, you're embarrassing me. But she pulled my hair. Well, you probably pulled hers first. Step down now. No, I didn't. She sat behind me and pulled and pulled. Because you wanted the whole seat? No, Mommy, honest. You were too selfish to share your seat, weren't you? No, please believe me. Well, you must have done something wrong. No wonder you don't have any friends. But it wasn't my fault. It's always your fault, Amy. You are a stubborn child. Mom! And stop <laughs> that right now! People are watching us. Sorry, Mommy. Well, sorry won't keep you from the spanking you're gonna get when I get you home. Growing up in a home filled with sarcasm and verbal abuse led Amy to a life full of discouragement and insecurity. Lonely and afraid, and with little confidence in her own abilities, would she ever find the strength to live above her fears and doubts? Find out in this true story of Amy Trees, right now on Unshackled. My childhood was like walking through a minefield. One wrong word from anyone and my mother's tirades and insults would begin, with me the easiest target. My dad was much more easygoing and as a result, he didn't stay around very long to put up with my mother's demeaning ways. The only place I felt cared for and secure in those early years was with my grandmother. Going to her house opened up a whole different world for me. He just couldn't be miserable around Grandma. Amy, where are you, girl? In the closet. The closet, huh? Any reason for that? Well, you might make fun of me. Not me, Amy. Come on out and tell me what's going on. There now, what you doing in there? Grandma, you ever heard of the Boogeyman? The Boogeyman? Well, sure, I know about him. You do? I met up with him a time or two when I was your age. You did? Were you scared? No, because I knew the secret. There's a secret? Why, sure there is. And I'll tell you if you jump back in bed. Okay. See, Amy, I did my share of hiding in closets myself because noises in the dark scared me. So? What did you do? Well, one night I decided to catch that mean old thing and do away with him for good. And guess what? What? Turns out there wasn't a boogeyman at all. It was just my mean old brother doing mischief. What did you do? I turned the tables on him, sneaked up on him, grabbed him, and started hollering. <laughs> you should have seen that boy run. <laughs> See there? You're laughing. You can't be afraid when you're laughing. Now you close your eyes and think about all the fun things you'll do tomorrow. Like what? Like going to church in the morning. Okay, 
I like going to church and putting my nickel in the offering. There you go. Those thoughts will keep that old boogeyman away. Grandma always made everything better when things at home were miserable. When she retired and moved far away, I was devastated and sure that my last hope for kindness was gone. Even though Mom took my brother and me to church now and then, with both Dad and Grandma gone, I felt more alone than ever. For a while, I thought I had found a kind of replacement for Grandma when Mom hired our uncle to babysit us after school. As soon as she dropped us off at his house, He'd tell us to run across the field to visit our great Aunt Mary. That was almost as good as being with Grandma. Until Mom found out about it. He's got the whole world in his hands. Yay, Aunt Mary, you sure play good. Thank you, darling. Why does the song say he has the world in his hands? Because it's a song about God and how he takes such good care of the whole world. Makes me feel good to hear it. Me too. I can teach it to you, but you can't sing on an empty stomach. You can't? No, no. You need peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and maybe ice cream, too. Really? Sure, and something special to take home, too. I'll get you a bag. You can raid my pantry. Wow. Thank you, Aunt Mary. I love to hear Great Aunt Mary play and sing songs about God. She always seems so happy. And of course, we look forward to raiding all the goodies in her pantry. Those were wonderful visits for us. Until Mom figured out why we were coming home loaded down with canned goods and treats. Amy! Get in here! Where did you get all this stuff? From Aunt Mary. Expensive stuff. Are you stealing it from her? No, Mom. She said we could have it. Oh, she gave it to you. <laughs> Great. Now everyone will think I can't feed my kids. She didn't say that. Did you stop to think how much this would embarrass me? Well, no. No, no, of course not. Because you are a selfish, spoiled brat. And you're not going over there again. Why? She was being nice. Don't you dare argue with me. And she sang songs about God. She did this just to embarrass me. And I will not be embarrassed. <laughs> but, Mom. No. No. Not another word. <laughs> and stop the crying. Why can't you do anything without crying? Sadly, Crying seemed to be the only thing I was good at. Even at school, I had very few friends because I was afraid to be rejected or humiliated like I was so often at home. Even as shy as I was, I still loved school and, and as I grew older, I especially loved to write. But I dreaded the ride home after each parent-teacher conference. Those meetings often gave my mother even more ammunition to humiliate and belittle me. So. Your teacher told me some interesting things about you today. She did? Mm-hmm. Seems you like writing. Yes, but uh, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Apparently not. She said you couldn't find but two sentences to include in your paper on why I love my mother. Oh, I tried. Really? Two sentences? That's all I get, Amy? Two? I'll try harder next time. <laughs> That it was embarrassing in front of all those other kids to only have two nice things to say about your mother. I'm sorry, Mom. Did you know your teacher thinks you're mentally ill? What? Yeah. Maybe you would do better in a mental institution. What do you think of that, huh? She really said that? Oh, we could find one for you, Amy. Probably do you good. No, Mom, please, no. Then you better shape up and learn to appreciate me. And stop that crying. <laughs> My longing for a friend, someone who would understand me and stick up for me, never worked out well. Though I tried to befriend some of the other girls at school, who were shy like I was, they always moved away and left me feeling more alone than ever. At junior high, I even resorted to childlike prayers that I had heard in church when I was little, hoping that if there was a God, he might feel sorry for me and 
drop a friendship into my life. By my high school years, some big adjustments were coming in my family that would change everything in my world. I didn't know then that they would also bring great challenges. But I knew for sure I would need a real friend and ally if I was going to survive. Folks, we'll get back to Amy's story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, let's get back to Amy's story. Change is always hard, but especially when it moves right into your house and lives with you. That was how I felt when my mom remarried. As I navigated my way past my friendless high school years and into community college and a part-time job, I was still searching for that friend or ally to help me manage life. I kept hoping that the addition of a stepfather would give me a little break from my mother's continual criticism of me. Instead. I found that having a different dad in the house wasn't as easy or as welcome as it might seem. What in the world's going on in there? Oh, sorry, I'm... Dad, just getting a sandwich. You're waking the whole house, Amy. Sorry, I was trying to be quiet. What's wrong with you? Coming in here, waking everybody up? I skipped dinner because I worked late. I'll grab something and go to my room. Oh, no, you don't. Give me that plate. But I, I haven't eaten. <laughs> Hey, what's going on in here? <gasps> hey, that's my that's my good serving dish. I was just trying. Who's gonna pay for this mess? Is that pot I smell on you? What? No, of course not. Ah, oh, I bet it is. No wonder you were so clumsy. I'm not into that, Mom. Oh, so you say. But as of now, you can start looking for somewhere else to live. What? Y you want me out? I'm not gonna have a pothead in the house. And not in this house. I told you, you know. You know what? Fine. I'll start searching tomorrow. Yeah, and until then, no more eating in this house. You're kidding. No, you heard your mom. Take your sandwich and get out. But where am I supposed to eat? You got a car. You can go eat there. Go on. But please, Dad. We have enough to handle without you messing everything up. And clean up this mess before you go to bed. Eating alone in my car night after night only increased my anxieties. So I began to search for any opportunity that would take me far away from my mother's cruelty. Sadly, the jobs I found never lasted long. For a while, I roomed with a girl who claimed to be a Christian. But even though she spoke about her faith with others, I was disappointed that she never mentioned it to me. I remembered how important church was to my grandparents when I was little. But now my only concept of God was as an angry man in heaven, marking down every mistake I made. Until the day I stopped to listen to some people on a street corner, and I realized they were talking about a different kind of God than I knew. I have a wonderful gift here for anyone who wants it. Here you are, sir. Take one. And one for your daughter, too? What about you, miss? Um, are those Bibles? That's right. Here, you're welcome to take one. Oh, no, I, I I, don't have any cash with me. No worries. You don't have to pay. They're free. Really? Really. The organization I belong to gives them away. 
Please take it, it's yours. Thank you, I uh, had one once as a child, but I never read it much. Well then, I suggest you start by reading the book of John in the New Testament. It explains the best free gift there is. Free gift? That's right. You see, this Bible was a free gift to you today. You didn't have to pay for it. But in the book of John, you'll read about a man named Jesus whose free gift to us is eternal life. Thanks. But I'm having a hard enough time with this life right now. <laughs> yeah, I get that. But if that's the case, you need a friend to help you through. A friend, huh? I could sure use that. The best friend you'll ever find is in these pages. His name is Jesus. He died for your sins. And if you believe in him, he will bring you inner peace and joy. You sure about that? Very sure. It says so. In here. Read it for yourself. I took the Bible home with a tract that explained more about a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'd never thought much about Jesus, except as a name I heard in songs at church. But reading this tract described him as a wonderful friend. It also showed me how wrong my concept of God had been when I read that God loved us so much that he sent his own son, Jesus, to pay for our sins when he died on a cross. I didn't feel worthy of that kind of love. But to have a friend like that was what I'd longed for all my life. I had to know more, and I knew where I would need to go to begin my search. Hello? Amy, this is Greg Fields, one of the elders from church. Wanted you to know we're glad you visited last week. Oh, well, thanks. What can I do for you, Mr. Fields? Oh, well, actually, I'm, uh, I'm calling to see if there's anything I can do for you. You are? Yep. I thought maybe you'd enjoy making a few friends at our women's fellowship. They'd love to have you attend. Oh. Uh, I don't know. They meet on Tuesday evenings. Think about it, and I'll check in with you on Sunday. Okay. I will. And thank you. I was thrilled that someone at church noticed me and cared enough to call. Since I had been reading the Bible and listening carefully to the Sunday sermons, I had begun to see that I'd been missing the most important relationship all my life. With an open heart, I started with the book of John, and as I read the stories and the words of Jesus, I could see myself in the hurting people that Jesus spoke to with such love and healing. This was what I had been missing and searching for all my life. That unconditional love and forgiveness that could only be found in Jesus Christ. When I finally asked God for forgiveness for my sinful past and received his free gift of salvation, I knew I had found not only a savior, but my best friend. Hello? Greg Fields here, Amy. Just checking in on you? I'm so glad you did, Mr. Fields. I finally found what I was looking for. I'm now a believer in Jesus as my savior. I thought there was something different about you this week. Well, that's wonderful, Amy. Welcome to the family. Family? <laughs> wow. I, I never really had much of a family before. Well, you've got one now. And my first suggestion is that group I mentioned to you. The women's group? I think I might be ready for that now. Great. Oh, and wait till you meet Mrs. Bailey. She's like a second mother. You'll feel right at home. A second mother? That sounds better than you can imagine. I'll be there. That suggestion changed my life. I found meaningful relationships with other Christian women who were easy to talk to and laugh with. Being nurtured by someone as loving as Mrs. Bailey helped my hurting soul. But it also made me wonder why my own mother had never shown any warmth or caring for me. Especially when I found out she had divorced and remarried again, was moving far away. Though I knew there could never be any hope for reconciliation, 
I still wanted her to understand the hurt and humiliation she had caused me. Even though the idea of confronting her brought back all my fears and inadequacies, I was grateful I could take my questions to Mrs. Bailey, who listened and cared. So all of that to say, thank you, Mrs. Bailey. You've already shown me more kindness than my own mother ever did. Is that so? Well then, your mother has missed out on a great blessing, my dear. Thank you. But I doubt she would feel that way. Hmm? Why do you say that? You see, my mother isn't at all like you. She didn't treat me very well. She was difficult and cruel and caused me a lot of heartache. Hmm. I'm so sorry, Amy. For all that she's put you through, she must be a very unhappy person herself. I guess. She always made me feel worthless. You know, sometimes people do that because, well, they feel worthless themselves. Yeah. Never thought of that. Amy, when you received Jesus as your Savior recently, how did that make you feel? Thankful, I guess. And relieved. Why relieved? Because I learned that Jesus wouldn't reject me as not being good enough or worthy enough for him to love me. So it began to heal your spirit? I guess it did. Do you think it's possible that your mother needs that kind of healing? Yes, but... It's hard for me to forgive her. I think she should know all she's done to hurt me. I understand that. But, Amy, if you can't show her the same grace that God has shown you, you'll never have total peace in the love of God. But how can I forget what she did? Oh, my child, I didn't say forget. I said to find it in your heart to forgive her so that you can be free. Like the verse we just read last week? Um... Forbearing one another and... Forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. That's right. So you don't think I should confront her? My advice? Instead of confronting her, which will only bring you more pain, maybe you should start to pray for her. Can you find it in your heart to do that? I guess I can. I know you can. Trust God to deal with her sins, my dear so you can move on. I'll try, Mrs. Bailey. I'll try. That was how Mrs. Bailey taught me about the grace of God. How I wanted to be like her, encouraging others to know the love of Jesus. I didn't know then that God would take this lonely, broken young woman and lead me through Bible college to a happy marriage with a Christian man, and then into a ministry of helping others to find the peace that I found. God never wastes an experience. Even the hurtful ones have something to teach us. When trouble comes, or I start feeling unworthy, instead of defeat, I remind myself and others of this promise from God's word. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He began a good work in me, and it was what I needed all along. Jesus, my friend, my savior. Although her life was filled with hardships, Amy Trees believed and put her trust in Jesus, and that made all the difference. Amy and her husband have a thriving ministry of teaching the gospel to others. Her message to them reminds them that no matter what your life has been like, it's Jesus who can give you peace. Romans 8.5 says that God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listening friend, have you considered the help you can find in Jesus? And if you haven't, why not do so today? You will find a friend who will change your life and give you peace. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, 
thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you need help in making this crucial decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled In Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the prize for this sweepstakes contest is yet another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This specific plaque has dark brown bark and a golden center. The scripture is written in light green color that makes it pop. If you'd like to take a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for a picture. Folks, unfortunately, we are only able to mail this plaque to locations within the United States, so our drawing is limited to U.S. addresses. But if you reside in the U.S., all you have to do to enter our sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. That's your name, phone number, and email. The winner of the sweepstake for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced March 20th, but the deadline for entry is March 4th. We look forward to hearing from you, and next time... Uh, Keith, I want you to look over these addresses and see if there's anyone else you want to add. For what? To send out your graduation announcements to. No, I don't want a party. Keith, we've got to do something. Going to college is an important step. I don't really need to go to college. Keith had his own plans for his life. You don't want to go to college now? I can be making money without it. But bankrupt and brokenhearted, he started to wonder where he was going wrong. Mr. Becker, I'm here to inform you that we're repossessing your car. Tell him, Keith. Tell him there's some mistake. I mean, business is great, right? I don't want to talk about it. From rebellion to bending the knee to devastating tragedy, Keith saw God's power to turn his family's story into a powerful ministry. Today, I'd like to tell you a story about an all-American kid, a kid who had it all, only to lose it all, all too soon. Don't miss the true story of Keith Becker, Coming soon on Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Amy Trees were Angela Morris, Lisa Keefe, Marcy Mencotti, Tom Geich, and Demetrius Troy. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Sound assistant, Holly Krajewski. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Script, Karen Knight. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.